welcome to Board Game Empire. We're going to be doing a brief overview and review of Bark Avenue by Good Games Publishing. So this came out last year, and it's a game where you're playing as a competitive dog walker, trying to earn the most tips and get uh, the most of dogs home with um, the most review stars that you can get for uh, for getting them home on time, keeping them happy, making sure they poo, um, bring, taking a photo, so little things, activities that makes the dogs happy and the owners happy will earn you more tips. And if you get them home in time uh, by being efficient in your walking and trying to walk several dogs at once, that is the way, the best way to try to uh, do the balance and win this game. So we set up for a two player game and basically you're going to have your dog cards up here on top. You'll have four showing. Um, your discard pile will be over here. You have your public or private objective cards that have the little dog with the question mark on top. You keep those hidden, but they are like mine was $10 for each set of these uh, activities on my dog. So each, if I had for each set of three, I would get $10. And this one was taking, completing two solo walks. I would get twenty dollars at the end of the game. See, mine was uh, pretty much the four dollars per uh, east side dogs, uh, and it's pretty simple a two-player game because you have to pick either east or west. And so we picked east. So logically, uh, <laughs> that was an easy one to pick of the yes. two that you start with. Yeah. And then this one um, later on, we uh, got another one. So this one, this this one. So pack leader. And then all the while you're also the as the round tracker goes to the end, the sun, um, you'll have event cards that will be coming into play that also manipulate various rules of the game and um some of them don't really do much, but some of them are they're all most of them have this little round. Um, thing which means it's ongoing until another event card covers it and some of them are instant so those those come out quite a bit and there's some if it's uh, if they basically don't pertain to you you could just because they are some that say for three plus you just go to the next one or uh, first card right and um, so you start out there this will be blank when you start out we've already played the game I wanted to leave those on there. Um, each player picks a player board and then gets the uh, dog walker meeple and five review stars in the same color. You get three photo tokens, three happy wagging tail tokens or some happy tokens, <laughs> um, three poop tokens, and then you get three of the little paw prints on the one side it's a home, and I'll show you that briefly in just a just a moment. So you are at the beginning of the game. You only have two slots available for to, to walk dogs in. To you unlock this third one when you, as you use your as you able to put your stars on the in the rewards track here, you'll be unlocking these. So when you get up to this third one, you'll unlock that third slot. Uh, that you can walk a dog, um, three dogs at one time, as long as they get along. I'll go over that here in just one second. You will be, at the beginning of your turn, you'll be rolling either the city dice or the park dice. The park dice is for this section, the city dice is for that section, or this section. And on this dice, they have poo, which you need, because that's one of the rewards, uh, one of the things you get, actually, if you have poo that you showed you, Take your dog to poo, you will get two dollars in tip for that. If you also take a photo, you'll get another two dollars. If you happen to also make them happy by either letting them go to the hydrant, um, water, or play with a tennis ball, you'll get the happy token. If you get all three of these and shows what they want in the upper right corner, that's their fun activity. Um, if you get all three of those, you would get a $6 tip. To, and you're, at the end of the game, you're going to be adding up your tips, the money that's on the dogs that you complete, um, 
and some of your in-game bonuses, which are on your uh, objective. objective cards. So you will be rolling the dice. Then you get to choose one action to do. You can either pick up a dog, so you would just travel. Um, if you don't have any dogs, your default is four steps. Once you have dogs, there's a little tennis shoe in the upper left that tells you how many steps you have to take. No more, no more, no less. If you have multiple dogs, like say one's a five, one's a four, you would have four steps. You go with the lowest of the dogs that you have, but you would still be walking those two dogs at the same time if you have them both here um, in your thing. If you roll the golden poo, where is it? Hold on, the park, park one, I think. Yeah, the park one. That one um, m means all the dogs you have pooed. So that's a good thing because that's $2 tip when you return them to their home. So to pick up a dog, okay, so this one's 59th and 2nd Avenue. So say I had one, two, three, four, oh, I did have four steps. So I went four steps there. I can get any, this is that city or that street grid, basically the all four sections. So I would be able to pick up this dog and if I have an open slot, put it as the next dog I'm gonna walk. I have, see the little paw prints with the three? I have, th I can walk in three paw prints. So when you put a dog down, you put the paw print in one. As you play each round, oh, can they not I'm see up, that? Yeah, I'm up that here since we're not using this board. Just okay, as they play each side. round, um, the dog take you move the dog paw print up by one. So this one's a three, so once he, once I hit three, I turn it over to the home, and then you start moving backwards. That's how many steps, or how many rounds you have, basically. So if it's a three, you have six rounds to get them back to 52nd and 2nd Avenue, that particular dog. So you'll be playing many rounds, and then you need to come back to that four square grid and drop the, the dog off at home. And hopefully you've filled in all of its activities, or at least a couple of them, because um, you'll get the $6 tip and you'll get to put one of your stars over here to the perfect walk. There's several things that you can put your reward stars on. Um, and you do get a 10 point bonus if you're able to get rid of all five of your stars. You get a $10 bonus at the end of the game. So you really want to try to do that. And they do make it pretty easy. There's quite a bit of quite a big selection of categories. There's any walk, so basically you just walk your dog, you get it well-rounded, which means you have one of each size. The sizes are right here. So um, it would be like, you know, small, medium, large. Uh, foster dog, that is uh, one that has a red star here. That um, means it's a foster dog. So when you walk them, you get to do two reward stars if you're able to. So you get the foster dog by default, and then if you are able to complete one of these others, you can put a second star. Normally you can only put one reward star out. Then there's the three dogs, meaning three identical dogs, it looks like, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, no, actually it's just three dogs when you have three dogs. This next one is three identical dogs, the expert. Um, solo walk without using treats. So some of those breeds, like the one we have, the little terriers, they're a little snippy with other dogs and people. So <laughs> this one tells you, one over here, they only wanna walk by themselves and they don't get along with other dogs. Um, they don't get along with big or small dogs. Um, so you can put a treat on it and that's basically bribing them to pretty much be able to be walked with other dogs. <laughs> It ignores all their bad traits, basically. Um, but you have to buy these or earn them with your reward stars, or you can buy them over here for $2. But if you put a treat on a solo dog, you won't be able to do the solo dog. Right. That's okay. without a treat. And it shows right there you can't. If it has a treat, it right. doesn't count. So you only get to claim that. If, but I did have... A, it doesn't matter though on the objectives, the public objectives. I just needed to do two solo walks. It didn't matter if they had a treat or not. I still was able to claim that. Um, treat training, that means you did one with a treat. So see, even if you didn't get that one, you could get that one. And then a uh, local, it's three dogs from the same neighborhood. So that one would Pretty be a hard. little tough to do maybe. But these dogs are always changing because um, 
when you're doing the round tracker, it, it has you take off the last two and s squeeze them all down, so or scoot them on down. It's there. It's always refreshing. Um, this round tracker is is managed by the sum there, and you just go down. and I'll let Anthony tell you about that. Uh, so pretty much this one, you just uh, remove two. This one, you remove all. Uh, event, remove two. This one. He's the, talking about dogs. Remove the two. Uh, dogs. This is the uh, event. Same thing with the. Uh, but this one is pretty much you remove all, you put new ones, and you add two dollars to each one. Then event two dollars and tips. Yeah, and then event, you remove all of them. The event, and at this point, you don't have any. Um, over here, you won't be able to uh, purchase or or collect dogs, um, but you will be able to put a star, um, one of the stars that you've actually collect already uh, got here. Um, earned uh you'll be able to put on the coffee shops or the coffee that's worth four dollars at the yeah. end of the game and then this one the events go away this one's the end of the game and so the coffee sh the coffees also are beneficial because you'll be able to do one extra action and you actually flip it and then you get one more additional action yes yeah, so, so you the, get two tanks these are both purchased for two dollars um you go to a space that has them and you could purchase those um, I didn't go over all the actions. So here's the actions you get to choose from. Pick up dog, drop off dog, favorite activity, which is when you just land in the neighborhood. If their activity is shown on there, you get to take one of the happy tokens and put it underneath the dog. Um, take a photo. That's just a, you just say, yeah, I took a photo, put the photo there. You have to but you up. have to be one on the camera, sorry. You have to go to the camera. And it only counts as one dog. You can't do multiple dogs. Um, and then the other one is pooed, and that's only on the dice. Uh, the coffee shop, like you said, that's where you get the coffee for $2. Uh, the pet shop's where you get the bones, the treats. Um, the dog park requires one star. It lets you slide all walk tracker tokens on the track. Um, and then advertisement is what he was talking about when you could take one of your earned stars and place them on one of the empty coffee shops for four extra dollars at the end of the game. Uh, that's how he beat me. We actually thought I won, and then he won by basically the amount of coffee shops because I still had a dog I had to drop off, and he had already dropped all his off. So I spent the last three rounds like trying my best to make sure I got my dog home on time, which I did, and I think I got perfect. I got all three, but yeah, he beat me because of his star, his reward stars. She sounds a little sad. <laughs> so I think I, did I cover it? Yeah. I think I covered it pretty well. So what did you think? Uh, I really like the components of the illustration. Um, it's quite a big board for everything you could do. Um, so, and I really do like the little, uh, cardboard pieces, the dice is pretty cool. Uh, so really good illustration and it's very well thought out theme. It, this game literally sticks to the theme, um, to the T. So really good in that aspect. Uh, replayability, high replayability because there's so many different things and different uh, routes you could do. Plus you, uh, the different player counts. Um, setup doesn't take that long, probably five to 10 minutes. Teardown is probably gonna be less. Um, because it's just mostly cards and, and you know, just uh, cardboard. So high replayability. Uh, mechanics. Um, now, the mechanics do, uh, I do feel that it does feel repetitive at times because you are doing the same thing over and over. Um, there are a lot of options, but there is, uh, it's pretty much solitaire for the most part. And it does, um, you're pretty much doing a lot of similar, um, you're just going back and forth and uh, I just don't feel that there's enough uh, strategy or build to it. Also, the game length is quite long um, for the repetitive nature of this of the mechanics. Uh, but overall total, I'm giving this a seven out of 10. I think this is a good core game. Um, I just feel maybe uh, it should be streamed out, st uh, just cut back a little bit on the length of the game uh, through the, this uh, area. And so maybe like cut like three off. And I think that would have shortened it to like a 35, 
40 minute timeline because this game did take a while to play. Probably, I'm guessing like 45 to 50 minutes. I think that 10 minutes would have um, made it just a little bit for the amount of mechanics it has uh, better suited. So at that point, I would probably give it like a 7.58. But for the length of the game and the repetitive nature of the mechanics, I give it a 7. Well, it, it, this was a fun game. We enjoyed playing it. Um, I would I would give it a 7 as well. My main beef, um, if you've watched our channel for a while, is with rule books. <laughs> Although they did cover everything very well in the rule book. There's no beef on that, but it just isn't laid out very well. It's not like chronologically laid out. So um, It does skip page to page. Like one piece go. of the information would be here, and then like four pages later, this yeah. the information that pertains to that as well that you would be looking for it, where you would be where I think most people would look for the information on some things. It's that on, on a different page, so they need to um, make the rule book a little lay it, lay it out better, where it's more chronological and things are. To, are together with um, questions you would have when you're on um, like cards. All the cards should be together and all, you know, just different. Like when you're, um, I kind of remember what it was. It was, uh, I can't remember, but there was, a, there were several examples where you were looking up an action and then you would have a quick question. Well, wait, what if this, this happens? You would find that answer maybe four pages down through it through the book. So, that's my only major beef with this game. It was a fun game, but that made it a little bit of a kind of a struggle bus the first game because when you do have those questions, you couldn't just quickly find it. It was a little difficult. But other than that, I mean, the mechanics are great. I do like the theme of it. I think the theme's very unique. Um, and it's, and like you said, it does stick to the theme very well. You do feel like you're a dog walker, you know, it's, you earning those tips and um, trying to please the owners and the dogs at the same time. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a balancing game of managing your cards and picking the right dogs that you know you, that will work together well so you could drop off several dogs maybe in neighborhoods that are adjacent to each other, close to each other, and keeping a mind on the number of Paul, like how many rounds you have to walk that dog and get it home. So, yeah, there's a lot of things, strategy that plays in in this game on on how to do that. Um, and and it, there is luck. It is luck-based because you are rolling dice, <laughs> um, especially to get the poo. And then I didn't even cover all the dice, but there's uh, squirrels and I forget what the other thing's called. Pigeons, pigeons and squirrels. So however the arrow lands is your first move has to be in that direction. So it kind of throws a little bit of a wrench in it, but honestly not much. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the, and then if you got a, a pea puddle, that, that means nothing. You didn't get anything, but it's mostly poo and additional steps. And again, those are, aren't, um, those are mandatory. However many steps you have, you have to take exactly that many steps. But that didn't really make a big difference because each uh, neighborhood is a, has four ways, to, four circles around it. So it's pretty easy to maneuver and get where you wanted to go, even if you had to go one little place out of your, but, out of your way. But this was a two-player game that we played. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and the three or more, you would have both uh, sides. Right, so, so we were just playing in this section right yeah. here. So, um, but, and I could see why they would do that, because you don't really, I could see why you would need more room with three to four players. Because yeah. you would, even in those type games, you would have to kind of pick which yeah. side you're gonna be on. So, yeah, I. it is, like you said, kind of more of a simultaneous solitaire game a little yeah. bit, because you're, there really isn't, interaction you're just it's a racing game yeah because even if someone's in in the same uh, vicinity as you and a certain like you know square it it really doesn't hinder you or hinder someone because they could easily there's so many i mean there's three yeah. to each one so four well if someone's taking oh one, right there's right. three so yeah so yeah i i mean if you 
if this looks like a game that might interest you, you should check it out because it, it is a fun game. Um, just beware, the rule looks a little little frustrating, but it does have all the information. It's not vague. That's worse. I would rather have that. <laughs> Vagueness is the worst. So it's very detailed. It's a great rule book other than that. So, um, so we will put the link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, please give this video a like. Please share it with your friends that you might think would enjoy this game. Uh, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And if not, we hope you will subscribe. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you next time.